this lecture on uh, cathodic protection in concrete structures. Today we will be discussing about laboratory and field studies uh, in which we were involved. Uh, so we will talk about first uh, some of the experience and overview of the present scenario uh, of cathodic protection industry in India and also we will cover something, some aspects of worldwide scenario and uh, then we will talk about a couple of uh, 10 year long studies because this is uh, most of the time when we recommend to adopt cathodic protection people ask for data long term data so i thought this is very important to uh, as a repair uh, technologist you should know that these systems really work and uh, we are trying to promote this now uh, what is just uh, even though we covered cathodic protection in one of the earlier lecture I thought of giving a little bit briefing on that before we get into the case studies and worldwide scenario. So any cathodic protection system and uh, to be precise the sacrificial anode cathodic protection system not the impress current system. So in the SACP system that is sacrificial anode cathodic protection system you have a, a you know a sacrificial anode core metal like a disc which you can see on the top left image which is covered by an active cementitious matrix. I may also call this encapsulating mortar in the coming part of the lecture and then these are actually connected to a tie wire and the uh, tie wire is uh, used to connect the anode metal to the uh, rebar. Now, some of the pictures are also shown on the screen which indicates how it is actually practiced at site. Now the global scenario of cathodic protection uh, in infrastructure sector. If you look at the, uh, the bar chart at the bottom you will see that the data going all the way from 1987 until about 2010. You can see that uh, there is a significant increase in the uh, number of CP systems installed. You can see some variations but that may not be the reality. It might be just the lack of data available or data collected and uh, so there is an increase in the way use of cathodic protection systems both in US, Europe and also in Netherlands uh, some data. The pie chart on the right side is actually uh, showing uh, you know the uh, distribution among different type of structures uh, which are uh, which have cathodic protection system. So you can see that buildings and bridges are almost similar but one should notice that in the bridges you may have much more the impact of this cathodic protection in the uh, you know long life is much more in case of bridges as compared to uh, buildings. And like you know, impact of that system on the economy and things like that. So this data both this bar chart and the uh, pie chart are showing uh, the data from one field survey conducted in uh, Netherlands and then the usage of CP in concrete structures if you look at North America rest of the world North America about 40 million US dollars rest of the world is double that which is about 80 million US dollars whereas in India the number shows very clearly that there is a lot more room to improve or to uh, penetrate into the market. A lot of structures we have a serious uh, corrosion and repair related issues. I think it will be better if we adopt this technology also this cathodic protection also to extend the life of the repair itself because uh, there is a fear in some sector of the industry that if the cathodic protection systems are in place then the other repair materials or repair systems will lose some of the market. I want to make it very clear that that is not the intention. It is uh, that if you use cathodic protection along with the other repair systems this cathodic protection will arrest the corrosion from happening and which will help the remaining systems like the chemical, whichever chemicals or coatings or you know fiber wrapping etc which we adopt. All those will be able to function to the full capacity or their, those systems will also tend to last longer. 
So that is how we have to look at cathodic protection, not as a competitor for the other industries, but other repair, uh, you know, industries or products, but as a uh, system which augments them, uh, their uh, performance or a system which helps the other systems to perform well. How? Because cathodic protection stops the corrosion, uh, uh, stops further corrosion from happening, which then helps in, uh, you know, uh, enhancing the performance of the other systems. So the last slide of this, uh, you know, this lecture, I will explain one example where, uh, you know, a system, a fiber wrapping system without cathodic protection, how it failed and if cathodic protection was in place, how it would have helped. So let's see more on other prevailing concerns regarding cathodic protection in India. Mainly it is the lack of knowledge among uh, many of the stakeholders, lack of knowledge about the CP and its usage in the concrete structure. People know very well that it is widely used in other uh, metallic industry like uh, any pipelines, etc. But in concrete structures, there are still some hesitation in adopting this technology, considering the uh, poor practices at site, etc. But those are the things which we have to overcome to avoid the huge maintenance and repair cost or rather repeated maintenance and repair cost. So uh, CP is very promising technology in my opinion. Now initial cost is high, it's a myth, not necessarily high. I will show some data uh, in this lecture showing that actually it doesn't really uh, you know, increase the repair cost much. Rather it will reduce the life cycle repair cost. Now other problem is uh, CP experts are not uh, locally or widely available and uh, complexity in repair, uh, then burden of maintenance, all these are general, uh, you know, uh, challenges. So let me just mark here that one of this is actually a myth. Okay. Now, what are the engineering problems? Now, one is design without considering the long-term performance. Many of the sites we have seen that Either the client, neither the client nor the, uh, you know, uh, the uh, suppliers of cathodic protection or manufacturers, they are not having enough data to show that the systems will uh, perform for long term and neither there are any tests, uh, you know, to ensure that such uh, long term performance. Because very important, otherwise what might happen is, if we install systems which are not really of good quality and which cannot really last long, then after a few years they will tend to fail and then that will create a negative perception on the cathodic protection technology itself, which is the big danger. So in fact, at IIT Madras, we have developed a test method which we are calling as gap test, which I'll show a glimpse of that in the few slides later which can be used to assess the long-term performance of cathodic protection system or galvanic anodes using uh, in about three to four months time period, which is very uh, good indicator and uh, which can be uh, you know, adopted uh, before we install such systems, especially in, uh, to ensure that the repair will actually last for a long time. A lack of field experience, then acidification due to high anode current density and high resistivity of the repair materials. And sometimes we also put other chemicals around the steel reinforcement, which will have high, uh, you know, like some kind of coatings, epoxy coating, etc., which will have high resistance. Uh, and that will adversely affect the performance of the cathodic protection system. So those kind of engineering problems do exist. However, there is enough uh, technology or, you know, good products are also available in the market which can be used uh, to ensure the longevity of the repair. Now, let's go through the first case study, which is a lab study. Uh, we have some data on this. So, these specimens were cast by Dr. George Sergi who is a pioneering figure in uh, cathodic protection technology uh, and he is from Vector Corrosion Technologies and he cast, uh, you know, four slab specimens which you can see on the screen at the bottom right. 
and in Mumbai and these are about 12 years old right now and you can see the how the slab specimen looks like it's about 1 meter by 1 meter slab with about 250 millimeter thick or 0.25 meter thick and uh, three types of anodes are installed or embedded in these slabs uh, one with 400 millimeter square anode one and another with 800 8000 millimeter square 4000 and 8000 and then 16000 millimeter square these are a1 a2 and a3 type anodes as it is mentioned on the screen now a few years ago we uh, got into this project and then we started uh, you know continuing the monitoring of uh, these specimens and these specimens are now stored in IIT Bombay laboratory Dr. Prakash Nandagopalan's lab and uh, we take uh, we take measurements uh, you know, regularly I'll show you some of the data and then this is how we have taken the data we take the potential using a simple multimeter and also corrosion rate using G core instrument uh, so uh, which uses a guard ring technology so this on the right side you can see an image which shows how the corrosion rate is being measured you can see black wires red wires etc going around the slab specimen that's basically to indicate all or showing the connections to the embedded anodes and the reinforcement so depolarized potential is the potential so when we assess the anodic uh, you know sacrificial anode systems one parameter which we measure is depolarized potential basically what it is is you disconnect the anode from the rebar which is you know uh, you know during the exposure time it is connected and protecting the steel but for the measurement purpose we disconnect it temporarily and after about one day that is 24 hours we take the corrosion potential and corrosion current measurement so that the anode do not influence the measurement. So you can see here very clearly. So and we call that potential as depolarized potential, especially done about uh, 24 hours after the dis after disconnecting the uh, anode from the rebars. So in uh, depolarized potential of rebars, you can see here the top three curves those are these uh, these three curves are much showing much uh, more positive data or positive potential than this curve which is uh, slab 4 and slab 4 is the one without any cathodic protection system slab 1 2 and 3 have a cathodic protection system so very clearly indicating that slab 4 is having much more negative potential and it is showing cracks on concrete and also started spalling after about 10 years or 11 years it started spalling now it is more a spalled specimen uh, so we can very clearly see that the use of cathodic protection and it will really uh, you know keep the potential at more positive range which indicates more positive means less corrosion Yeah, so these specimens it shows less corrosion as compared to the graph at the bottom. Now, let's see how the corrosion rate are. These are steel corrosion rates. So in cathodic protection, when we talk about corrosion rate, it's mainly the steel corrosion rate. We also talk about corrosion current, which sometimes is which is mainly for the current drawn from the anode. So these two things are different and should be given adequate care which you are talking about whether you are talking about the corrosion of the anode which is usually the zinc or the corrosion of the steel which is the uh, you know the steel to be protected so here steel corrosion rate again on slab 4 you can see very high corrosion rate and the slab 4 is one without the cathodic protection and slab 1 2 3 have cathodic protection installed and this is at the end of 12 years that one dozen of one dozen time period one dozen year 12 years of exposure and uh, that's a significant long time and we have with this graph itself is a proof that you know they really work in keeping the corrosion rate very uh, low now here you have visual observation on the left side is a representative image 
of slab 1, 2 and 3. You can see one of the slab image is shown with cathodic protection, no cracks at all. That means very low corrosion rate, very positive uh, half cell potential and at the same time no crack which is demonstration very clearly telling that it doesn't really corrode and it helps the steel from corroding whereas on the right side you can see the slab without the cathodic protection that is slab 4 in the previous slides and heavy corrosion on that right along the reinforcement line. So you can see on the right side the zoomed in image which shows very wide crack along the reinforcement and also the you know about to spall and delamination is also very clear as you see on the board picture on the uh, bottom side the red curve on that indicate basically the uh, crack locations so uh, how about i told that there is also one more current which we talk about that is the corrosion current or the current uh, given by the uh, anodes so A1, A2, A3 are the anodes, three anodes which were used and you can see very clearly uh, A1, uh, I mean all the anodes are still being very active in providing the uh, current demand. So here one thing you have to uh, remember is that uh, it is, uh, the, the, you can say someone might think that the curve is sloping down. So uh, what is happening, why it is going down. So you have to think that in sacrificial anode galvanic protection systems, the anodes provide the current which is being demanded by the steel. So it's a dynamic system. So as the time passes, what we have to think is as the time passes, the steel gets, uh, you know, passivated and then the demand for corrosion, uh, the demand for current is also going to be less. When the demand is less, the anode will provide only that much current. So point to be noted is whether the anode is providing current or not. Okay, so let's not look at the magnitude of that current, but whether it is above zero or not, whether it is able to provide the current which is demanded by the steel or not. That is the idea here. And what we are seeing on, as you see on the screen is that all the three anode systems are still able to provide the current as demanded by the already passivated steam. Okay, so it's still working. So even after 12 years, they are working. So then we also did some, you know, atop we autopsied, we take, took one uh, anode out of the slab and then just to see what is the condition of the anode. I want to show you that you can see some white patches here. You can see some white patches here, which is basically the zinc corrosion products oozing out of the uh, anode or through the encapsulating mortar. And here you can see the point one, two, three, which are the locations where further studies were done. I'm not showing those results here, but uh, just to show you how in depth we have studied, you can see this, this point here, this point here is the anode, which is uh, ex expose you can see that so that is the exposed anode yeah. now where we took that anode out and then broke or you know topsied that further to see what is the condition of the tie wire what we found is there were a lot of zinc corrosion product around the tie wires also which can eventually disconnect or you know stop the you know eventually affect the electrical connection between the tie wire and the zinc anode even now you can see some but this anode is still functioning but and you have to remember this is after 12 years it is still functioning but after some point of time if you have an anode uh, which uh, will have the severe problems like uh, you know corrosion around the tie wire then it may not really uh, function for very long period of time so the idea here is the tie wire should be well separated this is an old anode uh, system now most of the anode which come into the market they have die cast tie wires or in other words the tie wires are cast in molten zinc metal so there is no possibility of moisture to get into uh, the space around the tie wire and it is cast uh, die cast that's how it is done 
and that really helps and one must make sure that whatever anode you are trying to get from the market it must be die cast otherwise this will have this kind of problem in a relatively short period of time so depending on the condition so this is one thing to ensure that uh, you know the there are multiple things associated with the quality of the anode. One is the tie wire should be die cast. You can ask for it when you order the anodes. The tie wire should be die cast. And the another thing is the uh, encapsulating mortar should be porous enough so that the zinc corrosion products, which is white in color as you see on the picture, they can, uh, the uh, encapsulating mortar has enough void space or should have enough void space to accommodate all the zinc corrosion products which are coming out and at the same time the bare surface of the zinc should be having high p like the mortar uh, should be able to provide that high ph environment for the bare surface of the zinc so that the zinc can continue to corrode if the ph changes and decreases uh, then you, you, the zinc will stop, it will start passivating. In other words, zinc will stop corroding and once zinc stops corroding, then the system won't work. So these are, it is not just a zinc metal placed in a mortar because why I'm saying this is there are many market, there are many products out there in the market which are just having zinc metal with uh, some kind of, uh, you know, alkaline medium and a cementitious mortar around and uh, you know that may not really work for long term you have to really ensure that the uh, mortar is porous enough to accommodate the zinc corrosion and at the same time the mortar can provide sufficiently high ph 13 plus around sufficiently high ph to enable the new surfaces of the zinc metal to corrode so this Performance is very, very important. Unless these are all in, you know, ensured, the anode system will not work for very long period of time. So one must be very careful in uh, you know, checking how this is going to work. So now the question is, can we really wait for very long time to really check all this? May not be possible because you, you, you don't have that much time. So there is a short term test method which we developed at IIT Madras. We are going to call it galvanic anode performance test. You must have already seen a video on this in other lecture of the same course. Now we are calling it gap test. So this test, what you see on the picture, it's a, a motor cube or a you know a specimen with an embedded anode, not necessarily cube, depending on the shape of the anode, so that uh, uh, the cover is maintained at the same level. And then you have a mesh, a nickel chromium mesh at the bottom here. That's a mesh which you see and a square mesh which kind of uh, touches the uh, outer sur the surface of the uh, cube. And then uh, we apply current to it. I'll show the uh, current, I mean uh, the electrical circuit in the next slide. And then when you apply the current, what it is doing it, it is mimicking what happens in a real cathodic protection system. Here the nickel chromium mesh is kind of, uh, it is representing the steel reinforcement uh, in a, a real structure. So this is how the specimen, the cross section looks like. You have a sacrificial anode at the center. This is the sacrificial anode and then you have inside this rectangle here that is the encapsulating motor and then you have another motor uh, here uh, peripheral region so and then uh, you basically apply the current and then measure the current using a simple multimeter and then what you do is you monitor this current driven by the from the anode okay so after some time you will notice that the anode is not able to provide any more current. The red curves on the screen indicates after about uh, 90 days it just drops down about 80 to 90 days. The current output from the anode is almost negligible, very low. So that indicates the failure of that anode. 
whereas the blue curve on the top is able to provide the output current even for up to around 300 days that's almost a year at least 10 months that means very clearly the blue anode in this system is much better than the red anode and the blue anode will be able to provide much more uh, durability or much more uh, life for the repair than the red anode. So this is a you know I, I just uh, wanted to show this new test which we have developed and it's a very promising test method to compare the uh, or to end to compare the long term performance of the anode in short term. That's about so we can say like if you want a life of about 20 years how many months this should survive or not something like that we can look at and that will clearly give an indicator uh, whether a particular anode is good or bad and the anode can fail either by the corrosion of the tie wire or the corrosion of uh, the disconnection between the tie wire and the zinc metal because of the corrosion of the zinc around the tie wire or corrosion of the tie wire itself or the uh, zinc uh, is not getting enough uh, high pH environment in the long run as it's corroded, it's uh, not able to penetrate into the encapsulating motor or the motor is not able to provide sufficiently high pH because of those reasons the zinc will get passivated and that means it will stop corroding and that means the anode doesn't work anymore. So any of these things can happen and a red curve here shows an example of something like that which happened at about a three months time period and then in three months you will know that whether this anode is functioning or not three to four months of testing. Now you may say that three to four months of testing is too long but in my opinion wherever you are applying this uh, you know cathodic protection systems uh, it's very important you are doing something for very long period of service life and if you can't wait for two to three months to do this test I think it is worth uh, really worth uh, investing some time on doing this test for few months before you install something and then later on find that it doesn't really work after two to three years so it's very important to do this test or a similar test uh, to assess the long term performance of the anodes they are we are not installing these anodes for performing just four to four or five years we are expecting them to perform for 15 20 years so three four months of additional waiting is not really a big deal when you are trying to in uh, you know invest huge amount of money on uh, service life which is uh, expected to be 20 20 plus years another case study is a salt processing factory building in Tutukudi or Tutikorin. Uh, you can see the picture on the left side. It's a corroded condition. Uh, this is before the repair. After the repair, uh, you know, the structure was, uh, you know, strengthened. And, you know, you can see a lot of cracking on the vertical columns. And then what they did is they stopped the corrosion at that moment by installing cathodic protection systems and uh, additional reinforcement etc were also provided but stop the corrosion or the stop the ongoing corrosion that is the most important factor to be noticed here cathodic protection means you stop the corrosion okay and then whatever the residual steel available you see if it is sufficient if not you add additional steel but whatever be the case there is no more corrosion going to happen to the steel so that's the beauty of it so in this project, uh, the, they found that very high chloride concentration because it's a salt processing factory and also a coastal region and then continuous exposure to chloride environment. Conventional methods were failing and will fail due to hidden corrosion activity. So if you are just doing a patchwork, it's not really going to last longer because the corrosion will still continue to happen. So you have to arrest the corrosion from happening or stop the corrosion from happening and then best way to achieve that is to provide galvanic anodes okay and connect them to the steel and also some monitoring boxes were installed because this was done about 10 years ago and so people wanted to get data how it works so this is some of the data which we collected uh, from uh, you know Dr. Rajendran and you can see that uh, you know uh, the potentials are 
relatively in good range and these are not the half cell potential very important these are the depolarized potential means the potential measured after uh, you know the uh, after the cathodic protection system was switched off and then wait for a day and then take the measurement so we call it depolarized potential Okay, now this you can see the data after 6 months, 12 months, 18, 24, 48, even after 48 months, that's about 4 years, the data is still showing good protection. It's a much more positive than uh, the minus 350 critical range. So it's showing good uh, protection. Now, people think that, you know, cathodic protection, there is a myth that it is going to cost more. You know, I showed that in few slides earlier also. But what your reality is, you can see on this chart for this particular project, we got the cost data, repair cost data. For their entire repair work of this four-story building, you can see at the bottom different type of, uh, you know, project activities, scaffolding, grouting, surface preparation, additional reinforcement, CP stands for cathodic protection or anodes, exposy, epoxy adhesive, form work, micro concreting and protective coating. So these are all the different type of products and systems used for this repair work. And you see that the cathodic protection cost only about 4% of the total repair cost, which is much less. So this myth that cathodic protection means a lot of money is not really correct. And you know, you in this project, they have used micro concrete, which accounted for almost 30% uh, of the project cost and protective coating which is about 20%. So 50% of the project cost is coming from micro concreting and protective coatings. So that is where you may have to work on. Maybe you can even think of, do we really need to go for micro concreting, which is really expensive because of the high cementitious content, etc., and other chemicals which are there in the micro concrete. So you can rethink whether can we go for other types of concrete and still go concrete plus these other protection systems so that we can reduce the overall repair cost also. Another case study is about, this is about 20 year old finger jetty structure at Chennai port and after about 8 years of construction they found severe corrosion. So this is in the red box here is the type of structure that those columns over there or peers over there are going to be or are, I'm going to discuss about those peers over there. So this is the close up view of those peers. On the left side you can see heavily corroded. This picture is taken about 8 years, uh, sorry uh, about uh, 8 years after the construction, after the original construction. Excuse me. 8 years after the original construction. Now. Uh, you can see very severe corrosion over here, the pier cap, this region you can see very severe corrosion and chloride concentration was found to be greater than 0.6 percentage of chloride by weight of cement, significant mass loss, heavily corrosion, heavy corrosion and then what they did is they replaced, uh, you know, some of the reinforcement and point anodes were also installed, all the sacrificial anodes and monitoring boxes. You can see the picture on the right side. It shows a monitoring box which is connected to the anode inside. That is a repaired pier cap. You can see that uh, repair region and this picture on the right side was taken just a few months ago. It's very good condition still. That is after 12 years after the installation of the anodes. Picture on the left, swi left side was taken after eight years after the uh, construction, original construction and picture on the right side was taken after to, uh, 20 years after construction. That is 12 years of, uh, you know, service of the anodes. Now this is uh, how the additional, uh, the jacketing work was done. Uh, you can see the photograph on the left side which shows the additional reinforcement which is anchored into the existing column. And that square region was filled with and the structure looks like one on the uh, right side. So one anode per square meter of the concrete surface was the typical uh, application rate or the, uh, you know, the spacing of the anode was something like that. Now that also indicates we need more rational design procedures uh, rather than just going with the 
a number like this but still because this was a project done 12 years ago so we are still at that time probably it was very difficult to even get the authorities to agree for this kind of work so uh, anyway so let's have this data right now uh, pick some pictures here shows how the monitoring was done so we recently visited this site and then took some measurements and also some photographs so photographs very clearly indicate on the right side you can see uh, uh, the photographs which says no corrosion no major cracking i'm not saying no corrosion but no major cracking uh, even after 12 years of service so that's very good and picture on the bottom right also clearly shows no severe corrosion damage after 12 years of service now this is the data how it looked depolarized potential you can see uh, even though it is getting more and more negative but we still this is the plot is only for about four years and we couldn't collect the data after that but what you have on the screen that photograph is taken after 12 years of service and then it shows no corrosion cracking or no corrosion induced crack that means it's really serving very well imagine the image picture which was after eight years so that is this this picture on the left side this was eight years after eight years of service without any uh, sacrificial anodes and the, this picture is uh, the one uh, with sacrificial anode and after 12 years of service so very drastic you can very clearly see how uh, the anodes are protecting the steel from corrosion very promising now output current densities the, this is some of the current densities which we got uh, from the site and you can see very very low uh, you know it is still able to provide current that that's the point you know the anodes are still actively providing the current as it is required by the uh, peers so or by the steel so point is these are dynamic systems so if you if the steel is demanding more current the anode will give more current if steel is demanding less current the anode will give less current so these also depend on the humidity conditions on the particular pillars etc so you can see i put this west side east side etc so depending on the day what time of the day you are taking the measurement and the what is the humidity condition in that pillar at that uh, time or near the anode location that will govern the demand current demand and then if anode is able to provide that is good so this the message from this slide is that the anodes are able to deliver the current which is asked by the steel you can see of even up to 0.42 microamp per centimeter square in the p5 bottom left in the p5 that is the highest current on the screen and so the anode is able to deliver that much current even after 12 years of installation so highly still active anodes so what is the outcome of or the you know, lesson learned is you I, we can expect much more uh, years of service with these anodes and then for this it the peer is going to be protected even for longer period of time okay so picture on the left side severe corrosion by eight years in service without the anode and the picture on the lights right side minimal cracks even after 12 years of cp installation so the one on the left side is without any anodes just eight years the one on the right side is with anode even after 12 years there is no significant corrosion so people ask for data so that is why we are providing this there are sufficient data available proving that these systems really work so let's practice this more and more and generate more and more data and then protect our structures also at the same time so in the cost factor here the again micro concrete that stick is very tall uh, that's the you know cost wise the largest cost and you have the anode cost was just about two percentage 2.35 percentage of the project cost so this anode cost is nothing it's just that we need to have that build power to uh, and uh, you know guts to actually start practicing uh, cathodic protection system so it is not really affecting the in capital investment of the repair but definitely it is protecting the structure for much long period of time that means the life cycle repair cost is going to be or life cycle cost is going to be much less because we will not have to uh, repair often okay so this is 
another case study on uh, you know five year old building in uh, you know one of the major cities in india and this uh, building uh, had about i mean has about 500 units apartment complex and uh, you know severe corrosion were observed and being observed as i'm talking it is being happening uh, there is different columns elevator shaft basement element structural elements in the basement living room bedroom any any point in the building you will see uh, there you know corrosion is happening and when we visited people were saying like you wait if you don't see corrosion on this location you wait for two months you will see it there so that much is the severity of this problem why because unfortunately the building was made with chloride rich water or ground water which had enough sufficient chloride and or see uh, the sand which was also available and available and rich in uh, chloride so these are the possible reasons uh, with because of with the chloride conditions were very severe in this building so we tested the chloride concentration of the concrete and it was found very very high and steel was also of poor quality not like very good uh, you know steel uh, was used and cathodic protection was the only viable option about three and a half lakh anodes are being installed so imagine the amount of money which is being invested on to this uh, through cathodic protection so that the building can be preserved or saved so this is something very and someone would you know would not invest this much money if there is no uh, promises if there is, if it is not guaranteed right so definitely there is it is a promising technology we have to start using them wherever there are problems so if and again let me also say this is not a replacement for other technology other repair technologies this is a, a technology which is helping the other repair technologies to uh, serve better or augment so these are some of the photographs showing columns and then other structures and then on the bottom right you can see that is about uh, uh, you know staircase where the anodes are installed you can also see a uh, control or monitoring box on the bottom right you can see that so these were the example anodes installed to check the performance of the anode so one more important thing i want to tell is when we check the performance we should this is how the anode performance is checked you can see five anodes were installed and a reference electrode which is that green uh, you know mark over there which is kept very close to and embedded into the uh, concrete uh, which is very important so that you get a uniform data and at the same time the humidity of the test region should be maintained very high so that because we are testing the anode right so if you keep the humidity in that region very dry what will happen is there is no demand for corrosion so anode will not provide the current so what you have to do is this uh, area where the test region we call it test region those regions should be moistened or kept relatively wet before we take the electrical measurements and then we, when we take the electrical measurements we have to see whether the anodes are able to supply the necessary current or not and this should be done after the installation so that we can check whether the system is working or not we are not checking whether that product is independent or individual product or an anode is working or not we are checking here whether the system is working or not system when i mean after the installation so for this keeping very wet condition is important the test region should be really wet okay that let's say for example you can spray the water or keep that region wet for almost one day so that the resistivity of the concrete in that region becomes very low when the resistivity is very low then there is a possibility of the steel in that region to corrode so when the steel tends to corrode that means there is a high demand for uh, corrosion uh, the anodic current and then the anode will come into action they will provide that current then we can say if they are providing the current we can say yes the anodes are active and they are functioning at least at the time of testing again this doesn't give any long term performance indicator this test provides only the on site instantaneous performance 
for the long term performance you have to go for gap test okay which i explained in a few slides earlier and also in the other lecture now if you do this test this uh, you know on site instantaneous performance test if you are doing with dry concrete then the steel doesn't tend to corrode so there is no demand for the anodes to corrode sorry there is no demand given to the anode so the anode will not provide the current and then if your current is very low you cannot say that anode is bad okay so what you have to check is you have to keep it wet and then try to corrode the system and at that that moment the anode should come into the play and they should prevent that corrosion by giving the current one more time i'll tell this does not give the long term performance indicator this shows only that the anode after the installation immediately after the installation you can do this test to check whether the workmanship was good or not okay connectivity between the bars etc between the anode and the rebar etc were good or not all that you can check with this but for long term performance you really still have to go for gap test when i say long term i am talking term with anything beyond 2 or 3 years of time if you want to know whether the anodes are going to perform more than that time period it's better to go for gap test now this is the potential some data which we collected uh, you know and then here one th why i put that is instant on potential is there something which we call uh, means the moment the anode system is connected you take a measurement and then generally there is a criteria that 100 millivolt if there is a shift of potential if there is a 100 millivolt shift in the potential then the anode is good this is a uh, you know typical criteria which is practiced in many places but again this is not a necessary condition in my opinion because here you can see in these systems uh, there are there is a possibility that even though the shift in the potential is less than 100 millivolt as you see on the bar chart on the left side the corrosion current for the same system is still very low okay so ideal at the end what we need is low corrosion of steel so the blue graphs indicate that all these systems are actually providing good corrosion resistance or actually reducing the rate of corrosion of steel even though the potential shift is not 100 millivolt so uh, the message here is this 100 millivolt criteria if some anode systems which you get from the market if they are not meeting the 100 millivolt criteria it doesn't mean that they are bad what you have to see is whether those anodes are actually able to reduce the corrosion rate of the steel rebars if the corrosion rate is less then it is fine okay so that is the message now uh, life cycle cost uh, you know this is again a conceptual bar chart a conceptual flow diagram flash cash flow you can see that on the horizontal axis we have age of the structure on the vertical axis we have predicted cost of repair now if you go with the rut curve that is conventional repair that is patchwork after the patchwork after the patchwork without really having any more uh you know without really having a system to protect the steel from corroding that is cathodic protection then your cost goes you know significantly high very steep uh you know step curves so you can see that very immediate step curves on cr1 cr2 cr3 like that the cost is going to be significantly high so the life cycle cost of the structure is going to be very very high now if you go for cathodic protection which is the installation of anodes after the corrosion is identified okay that is when we call cathodic protection anodes are installed after the corrosion is identified which is the blue curve on the screen and you can see cp1 cp2 cp3 cp4 these are the cathodic protection installation time let's say we are designing some installation for 20 years of life so that is at cp1 you install you find that at cp1 you find that the structure is corroding and then you install a cathodic protection system then again another after 15 years of life if you find okay that system has exhausted completely then you go for cp2 
that is the second installation of cathodic protection like that you can still the cost overall cost is going to be much less which is about 400 unit on the image which is much less than the CR option that is and uh, that is a conventional repair option cathodic protection is blue conventional repair is red color now a more beneficial system is cathodic prevention system which is the green curve which you see that is you install the an sacrificial anodes before even the corrosion that means during the construction itself you give a pro you install cathodic uh, the uh, galvanic anodes and we are going to call it cathodic prevention system c prev okay that's the blue curve on the screen very clearly you can see that uh, it has much longer life and uh, you know, you can increase the, uh, you know, significantly increase the service life with minimal cost. So, if you are targeting a 100 year of life, all the investment is just required in the very beginning. Again, this is a conceptual graph just to show the difference between the three options. So, up to the, it's up to the designer or the, you know, whoever is paying money to decide on uh, which type of system is required for the desired service life okay now this is some more case studies data from real uh, you know you know experiences on how much you can generally say that you can, here i am showing a canteen building in mumbai jetty uh, multiple jetty structures in all these structures if you look at there is about 70 percent cost saving when you go for cathodic protection system okay so that is very very significant and this is just the repair one repair cost so that will save significantly also on the life cycle cost. So the 70% saving, you know, we really have to push this technology deep into our repair industry. It is very, very essential. And one more thing I want to say how this, this is a demonstration of how an installation of cathodic protection could have saved this fiber wrapping. So this structure on the bottom left the image, it's not a real clear image, but uh, you can see it's a power plant, cooling tower in a power plant and you have this, uh, you know, funnels at the top, huge structure, very thin, you know, element, but very large in diameter. Uh, these are the, uh, you know, cooling tower structures. In most power plants, you will see this and you can see there is a, you know, a red square mark over there, which indicate the uh, corroded region where the fiber wrapping was failed. So you can also see on the top left image, there is a wrapping, five, three, you know, ring kind of, you know, of laminates you can see. They are supposed, because this structure was experiencing a lot of cracking due to corrosion, because there's a lot of chloride rich environment here, because they use, this structure is right next to the seashore. So it uses the sea water and then that water after the, uh, you know, uh, power generation, it is cooled uh, using this. So that's why we call it cooling tower. So you, the tower, this particular concrete structure is exposed to very high uh, chloride environment, very uh, rich chloride conditions. And the uh, structure corrodes very fast. Then uh, about three years earlier ago, uh, somebody recommended putting this fiber wrapping to contain that, you know, forces of corrosion, etc. But it didn't work. Because the force, uh, the stress is coming from the corrosion of the steel inside. So unless you stop that corrosion from happening, the stress is going to keep on increasing and then keep on, uh, you know, exerting that pressure onto the surrounding concrete. So just providing a belt around the structure is not going to help. Belt, I mean the fiber wrap. You also have to stop the expansive stresses which is coming. So you have to stop the corrosion from happening first then provide the fiber wrapping, then it will help, okay. So here is an example where you can very clearly see the brown rest oozing out of the fiber wrapping and it is it has cracked the fiber wraps. So on the picture on the right side, you can see it is uh, the brown color rust oozing out through that little crack over the, not little crack, it's a large crack, uh, you know, few millimeters wide. And so if the and the, what you, the texture you see is the fiber wrap, okay, uh, fiber laminate. But if only in three years this is happening, so they 
invested a lot of money or rather spend a lot of money because there's no return of investment here. So they spend a lot of money on this wrapping this structure with fibers and then they found that they are not really helping because the corrosion was still happening. So two things. One is uh, when you go for repair, you have to really think about durability aspect and the structural aspect. So in this case, the reinforcement inside the corrosion of the reinforcement should be stopped. That is the uh, you know repair for the uh, to ensure durability. And at the same time, the structural strengthening for that the fiber wrapping is applied. Okay, so these two systems should work together. If if you are providing only the one system, it may not work very well. So uh, provide the stopping the corrosion or arresting the corrosion is very very important when we go for repair works, and that has to be done in an electrochemical manner. So that is cathodic protection, electrochemical like chloride extraction or electrochemical realkalization these these techniques are kind of becoming more and more important to show to uh, ensure that these repair is going to be long lasting okay otherwise uh, it's not the you know you will tend to go back again to the same point and keep repairing and this particular structure on the picture it is going to be demolished now because of this poor repair practice poor repair practice means uh, just providing fiber wrapping without any uh, method to arrest the corrosion. So if this FRP wrapping was done along with the cathodic protection of the steel, then this structure would have lasted much longer. So that's the message. So let's plan both cathodic protection and other repair systems. So don't look at cathodic protection as a competitor for other repair systems, but look at it as a system which helps the other systems to work effectively. Just to summarize, we looked at uh, different case studies, even 12 year old laboratory and field data were shown uh, or photographs uh, demonstrating that galvanic protection systems really work for even 12 plus years have shown. We have shown that and then we also demonstrated how uh, the galvanic anode performance gap test can be used to assess the long term performance of the anodes in very short term and it is really worth doing that test because if you really are thinking about long term performance you need to do this test and it is recommend, highly recommended and then also shown some field studies in India and quality assessment in the field we have to uh, not ASTM C876 is not directly applicable to this test this uh, uh, structures but we have what we have to measure is depolarized potential and we, we also saw that 100 millivolt criteria is not a necessary condition. What we need to ensure is the corrosion rate of the steel as long as it is less than 1 milliampere meter square then we can consider it as a passive condition and then properly implemented SSCP systems have been effectively protecting structure for about 12 years. We have now sufficient field data to uh, you know start distributing to everybody and then let's start uh, using cathodic protection system as a system which augments the other systems to perform very well okay so don't look at cathodic protection as a competitor to other repair practices but as a system which helps the other systems to work effectively and very sure that this is uh, application of cathodic protection is going to significantly reduce the life cycle cost by reducing the number of repairs. We also looked at the cost of factors. So I think with that I will close and these are the references which we used uh, to make this presentation and uh, uh, thank you.